Yes. So this is the brain. This is a sparkling, wonderful brain. Or it can be a very sad brain. But all of that is the colors of life, right? Uh, we all want to be happy and thereafter the end, right? That story does not exist in this life. In this life, we will have the colors of sadness, the depression, the anxieties, the poverty, the richness, the abundance, the lack of, the mystery, the known, the unknown, and not knowing the unknown, right? So we are in that mystery of life, and that's how the life is. So our life is going to be the way life is, not the way we think it should be. You know, we think it should be this and that, and life is not this and that. Life is what life is. So the forces of life are at play. So my goal is really kind of make you so very depressed at the end of this conversation that you will never come back for any other conference that we will ever do ever. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> you know, because if you're depressed and you can survive this conference, then you will be so very happy outside of this conference, right? You know, so, so this is the only short day, just one day of agony and misery. So understanding the fundamental of the brain health and chronic disease, even though as a psychiatrist, it really is not my job to fix diabetes and chronic fatigue and the fibromyalgia and hypertension and whatnot, but I know in my medical brain, they are connected. I know that. So our training was not to mess with the physical aspect of it to let somebody else take care of that mess, right? But I know the primary care doctors are not able to spend as much of time with their individual clinician or you know, patients. So by default, we have taken up this idea of working with some of the areas that I know people are struggling with, but they don't know what to do. They cannot even coordinate their own care because they're so very desperately not in a state of mind to coordinate their bipolar disorder and their diabetes and their weight issues and their hypertension, and their fatigue, and their sleep difficulties. They just don't have that in them. Okay? So we said we will do it. And we will at least guide them to the right pathways. And then they can find their own way. You know? So my job is not to take a person from point A to B. My, mine is to give you the guidance. This is point A and this is point B. You drive your car, or you walk, or you do whatever it takes to get there. And if you don't, don't come back complaining to me. Because I don't want to take up, listen to sadness stories and the victim stories. I can't do it. Well, then who is going to do it for you? I can't do it either. Right? Isn't that beautiful? I absorb the responsibilities of your traumas. I can empathize with your trauma and guide you how to be over, able to overcome with that trauma. Right? Because I just don't have in me to distribute myself into your life and take you to 20 different places. I just don't have it. So with that said, this conference is just to give you a summary of what I know in life and then let you find your way. Um, the objectives are that you're living, many of us are living a poor lifestyle, including myself. So I'm not an exception to I used to drink Pepsi and Sprite with proud and dignity. <laughs> I learned that it was so very tasty that if you add a little lemon to it, it was absolutely remarkable. Okay? Until I realized that it had so much of garbage added to that, I said, ah, I can't stand it, but I still loved it. You know? It's a love-hate relationship between our addictions that we have and the thing that we want to give up on. But that's the way life is. We, all of us have a lot of addictions without us knowing them. Work addiction, telephone addiction, you know, internet addiction, sexual addiction, you know, their food addiction, all that kind of stuff. It's nobody else's story. It's our story. It's my story. I am working on my addiction as I become more aware of them. So lifestyle is very important, folks. So my job is to take care of my own health care. It's not my doctor's job. Practicing stress relief, learning skills to have a healthy lifestyle. So during this conference, we will just guide you through the processes. And the state of affairs is, and this is not my number, these are CDC. CDC is the body, you know, 
with kind of tracks and data that everybody buys into. There are enough prescription painkillers for prescribed in 2010 to medicate every American adult around the clock for a month. Okay. And we are doing it, the doctors are doing it, you know, doctors are prescribing their medicines. Um, we are using all these things, drugs prescribed or illicit. And it's affecting us. Do you think it goes anywhere? No, well, it goes down, down to our, the way we are, you know, changing our, you know, our cells. It's changing, right? I mean, and we're making new cells. All this garbage gets incorporated into those cells. You know, it doesn't go away. If you put in garbage someplace, it's there. It starts thinking. Attention deficit disorder. Approximately 11% of children four, ages 4 to 17 years of age that 6.4 million have been diagnosed with this condition as of 2011. The manufacturer cannot make enough of the drugs sometimes to the people will come back, or that, that is not available to us anymore, can you give us a new pres different prescription? They just cannot catch up with the demand. No. These are facts. The percentage of children with an ADHD diagnosis continue to increase from 7.8 to 9.5 to 11%. There is very interesting, the total cost of care to ADHD in the U.S. is 31.6 billion. Of this total, the 1.6 billion was for the treatment of patients. Enormous amount of medicines used for treatment of a condition, I would think half of that or two-thirds of that does not even exist. We live in a way that our focus is so very poor because you're watching television, the gadgets and the thing, our focus is everywhere. The brain was never designed to watch a television. It was never the biological design to watch a television, or any screen for that matter. It was never designed for that. It was designed to watch a, watch a tree in its three dimension. Not to wear those goggles and watch in a cinema and watching a 3D movie. That was never the design of the brain. So the brain cannot figure it out, you know, all these things which are coming so very fast to it, what, what, what to do with that. So no wonder we have attention difficulties. Toxic environment. You think that the pollution that we're making just goes away? Who said that? It's a, such an illusion. We live in a delusion. We all need antipsychotic medicines. You know? We need to figure it out that when I throw something outside of my home, it doesn't go away. It's on the earth someplace, right? You know? So all these things that we're doing to the environment, whether it's to the environment in general, or if I'm drinking when I'm pregnant, you think it's not going to affect something? But it does. And it does. So these tires don't go away that are out of my sight. The guy who's throwing all these, you know, pesticides and all, do you think it just goes away? Look at him how he's trying to protect himself, you know? But he wants to make sure that you eat it. <laughs> it's very phenomenal. The whole GMO thing, you know, we, are, we have the genetically modified things. Who said that we are smarter than the beauty of the nature and the light? Who said that? You know, we actually are so very corrupt that we cannot even keep the trust that was given to us intact. We are so very corrupt. We just are, uh, and it goes back to the greed issue. I want more. Well, where am I going to take my more? And how long am I going to keep that more? You know, I had a patient, and she said she had a huge house in Fox Chapel, and she said, I hate my home now. I want to get rid of all of this thing. I cannot stand this big home. At one time, they loved that building that home and decorating them from things from far and near, right? She couldn't stand that because her brain was unhappy and her life was very unhappy. All the medicine they could give her could not make her health and happiness because she just wasn't happy. She was not very content with her own life. People who are discontent prove that doesn't work. It never has worked for discontentment. It never can work for discontentment. It just doesn't have the power to connect the heart, the heart into contentment. It just doesn't have it. So I can keep on changing some water to pull that to Lexapro, to this, to that, and my dance after all ends. Right? There's no more dance to do in front of a patient who's not content. Right? I don't, I don't have that. So we're eating things which are kind of garbage, or autism rates. And, and science is very, scientists are very tricky, and I, I'm no longer, you know, hostage to that trickiness. So in 2000, one in 150 people used to have this thing. Now in 2012, one in 68 have autism. Oh, we are doing better diagnosis, we have better criteria, 
and therefore we are doing that garbage, there is more autism. Simple fact of life. You know, we have more of condition, condition and disorders. People say quality of life has improved, span of life has improved. The quality of life has not improved. The span of life has improved. You know, my sister works in Indiana and, and she said, you know, she has so many patients and she has received a nursing home and, and she said they are so very complex, I don't know what to do with them. I, I refuse to work in a nursing home, it's so depressing. Right? Because we put our elderly after their quality of life is gone in a nursing home and then we send them flowers and we come and visit them on the Easter. Fantastic! But the quality of life is very important. And that is so very vital that we recognize that chronic diseases are the leading causes of difficulties in the U.S. and seven, you know, seven out of ten deaths among Americans each year are from chronic diseases. And they are, you know, there are obviously obesity, uh, you know, and the arthritis, the diabetes, the alcohol consumption. Again, they are direct from CDC uh, uh, consumption. So, I don't have time for my doctor appointment. Go in my place and tell him you're having trouble sleeping at your desk. And don't let him sweet talk to you about diet and exercise. I want pills. Isn't that beautiful? First, I shall open your head. Then I shall replace your faulty brain with a fresh cauliflower. How do I know you won't put me to sleep, eat the cauliflower, and claim the operation worked? That reminds me your insurance doesn't cover anesthesia. <laughs> so this is the paradigm that we're living. So, fear is the most predominant thing that I see in my practice. Fear. Fear of this, fear of that, fear of whatever that fear is. Money, relationships, health, whatever those fears are. And we have the choice of living in wisdom and then recognizing autoimmune diseases, cancer, diabetes, uh, dementia, gastrointestinal disorders, woman health, blood. These are not diversely different conditions. They come from the same plant of wisdom. The same body, this again from CDC, actually, uh, I forget what it's a governmental agency. The epigenetic effects, the cancer actually responds to food, diet, meditation, and living in wisdom. So does prenatal difficulty, so does the brain disorder, so do the chronic diseases. So the answers really are simpler than what we make them. They're much more simpler. These are interconnected conditions. This body is not a bunch of eye doctor, ear doctor, nose doctor, retina doctor, gut doctor, rectum doctor, foot doctor, that doctor, it is one body. One body needs one wiser individual that is you to take care of you. That really is the science of living in this one. So the effect of stress on the body are just the way this is going to get rusted. My body will get internally rusted if I don't know how to manage my stress. It just is that simple. If you don't meditate, start meditating. That's the best healthcare plan you can develop for yourself. I cannot meditate, my brain does not stop. But then learn. Learn how to stop your brain. Or learn how to meditate. Learn how to be effective. It takes time and energy. Everything takes time and energy. You know, you cannot meditate while you're flying your horses down the life's lane. You just cannot. Just stop and learn to how to meditate and breathe. You know, just so we do folks are taking the time to come here, there were lots of people who are running around the length of life and would never have the time until they're in an emergency room waiting for the doctor to see them. Sorry, that's fine with me. But meditation, you know, all of us should know how to do that. All of us know need to know how to eat healthy. All of us need to respect the bugs in our guts. They're beautiful. They're not not everything is danger. Everything is beautiful if we know how to take advantage of that. So this kind of finish on this slide, and this really goes back to what Lewis was kind of saying earlier on. Science is not proving the ancient wisdoms accurately, and scientists are claiming the responsibility of discovering them. It's almost like when when we all came here, we, we discovered America. Of course, America was discovered for the very first time. People lived there for thousands of years and we start killing them. Isn't that beautiful? And we said, it's mine. And you go to that reservation, and yes, we know how to take care of you by giving you smallpox blankets. 
That's beautiful. This is our heritage of claiming land, destroying wisdom, and now we are saying in the Cleveland Clinic, oh, we figured it out, our communities are so very important. Absolutely, and we have print them in the journal, then we take the credits for that, and then we earn CME credit out of Fantastic. Exosomes. Exosomes are secreted by most cell types and contribute to functions including tissue repair, neural communication, and the transfer of pathog pathogenic protein. Each cell of ours, it's almost like it throws our seeds. Either it throws our seeds of wisdom or it throws our seeds of difficulty, right? You know, it throws our seeds. So liver cell is throwing out seed things. Either if we have a cancer developing, it will throw out the seeds of cancer, okay? If it's a healthy, vibrant cell, it will throw out the seeds of happy, vibrant, you know, exosomes. These guys are the environment of our own body. And that environment is developed by meditating, eating healthfully, connecting to community, feeling that you can sleep at night time and let go of life, rather than obsessing about somebody who has pissed you off. Okay. <laughs> and on that note, I will end this point. I could talk more, but I think that and I'm going to go ahead and excite that to the next talk. Uh, so meditate, uh, change those slides. My son was meditating and not paying attention. <laughs> uh, and so we'll change them to the next topic, and then we'll talk about another subject matter, uh, which is, again, very profound. <laughs>